So I do a lot of work as a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology, teams, and products. So Linus Torvalds always has been a, a straight shooter and, he, and his take on AI is certainly no different. So he often cuts through the hype, refers to AI as autocorrect on steroids, and let's dive in a little bit more and see what he thinks about AI and where its place will land in the market. All right, so AI on steroids. Let's talk, or sorry, autocorrect on steroids. And I love this. And actually, it was really the interviewer who says it, but uh, Linus definitely agrees with it. So I've always considered Linus Travolts to be one of the great minds in the computing era. And if you don't know who he is, well, let me help you a little bit. So he's the original creator of Linux in 1991, and then also later went on and was the creator of Git because he was frustrated with all the current code repository tools. So Linux now runs over 54, 54% of all the devices in the world. So if you've got one of these, uh, you know, a good chunk of the world is on Android and Android is Linux. Now, as far as web servers, a staggering 96% of all web servers in the world runs Linux. So it's hard to say that any one person has contributed more to computing in the last 35 years than Linus Travolts. Now, he's a very polarizing subject uh, figure, right? Um, he's definitely been around the block. He's seen a lot of trends um, in the computer era and really been the center of a lot of them, too. So to say he's been around the block would be an understatement. So kind of back to this term, autocorrect on steroids. I, I really love this. The interviewer says it, but he agrees with it. Now, this witty analogy perfectly captures the current state of AI. It's powerful, but far from perfect. So while AI can automate certain tasks, certain tasks, it lacks nuances of understanding the human developers bring to the table. So Travolds emphasizes that AI is a tool to augment human capabilities, not to replace them. Now, the, this perspective is really crucial as we navigate the evolving tech landscape. So drawing from his own experience, Linus po points out that when he started, everything was done in assembly language. So today he writes in high level languages and he reflects on the evolution of programming languages over the you know, 35 or so years at this point. So this analogy highlights how tools and languages have continued to evolve to make developers more efficient without eliminating the need for skilled developers. AI is just another step in this evolution. It helps to streamline certain processes but still requires human oversight and creativity. The essence of development still remains rooted in human ingenuity. Um, remember that AI can only spit out what it's told to, and so it's only going to ever regurgitate the things that it has seen before, which isn't really the definition of innovation. So one of the significant areas where AI can make a difference is in security. Torvalds acknowledges that AI can assist in identifying vulnerabilities and automating response to security threats. He, he talked a lot about he would love when AI is smart enough to start reviewing the millions and millions of lines of the kernel, of the Linux kernel, and to be able to spot out security vulnerabilities. So he's quick to point out that human judgment is indispensable in making critical security decisions where it can point out some of the you know, finer points. So the combination of AI and human expertise can enhance the security of software systems. So the synergy is vital for creating robust and secure applications. Now also, make sure that you go back to the previous videos that we've done because we've made hundreds of coding videos and they have all free code samples. So make sure you go check out you know, the, the channel and make sure you like and subscribe, share with your friends, um, and especially if you know somebody who's a, a new and upcoming developer, this channel is perfect because we have a lot of free code samples out there. So make sure you grab those. Now, Linus Revolts is also a staunch advocate of open source. He was one of the first, I mean, not the first, sorry. He, the new developers, the GNU developers, were really some of the really first ones, but he definitely jumped on that bandwagon early and has been a big advocate and fan for open source for you know, almost four decades at this point. And he sees AI as a catalyst for further contributions to this ecosystem. So companies like NVIDIA are investing in open source projects, driving innovation and collaboration at a rate never seen before. We, he said we saw some during crypto phase and everybody kind of chuckles. Anytime he would mention crypto, everybody in the crowd kind of chuckles. But, um, you know, but he said they're contributing at a faster rate than ever before. So this collaborative environment fosters growth and learning, providing ample opportunities for developers. 
The open source movement is strengthened by AI, making it a win-win for everybody involved. AI is also impacting um, the hardware development, right? So AI, it's not just limited to software. It extends to hardware as well. Travolts discuss how AI can optimize hardware performance and assist in designing more efficient systems. This integration of AI and hardware develop, uh, development creates a demand for developers who can bridge the gap between software and hardware. I've often seen a lot of software developers who are like, I just do software, I don't do hardware. You know, with AI, you're really going to have to know the difference, right? Developers who can navigate in the intersection of these fields of hardware and software will open up a new career path and opportunities for innovation. Developers who can navigate both worlds might be high, will be highly sought after in the job market. So tech market is expanding thanks to AI's multifaceted applications, not replacing. Now, despite the hype, Travolz remains skeptical also about AI completely taking over jobs, right? He believes that AI will create more jobs than it eliminates by automating mundane tasks and enabling, de enabling developers to focus on a higher level of function. I've taken a lot of his comments, and the reason I'm not really showing a ton of uh, articles and stuff here is because I've actually combined about five different talks that he did. Um, <clears throat> so developers who embrace AI as a tool will find themselves in the forefront of this evolution. And so, again, you know, like, this is a really good spot for developers to be, and we love to help train developers here at Startup Hack. Now, integrating AI into existing software systems is really a tough task, and this takes developers. Yes, you can, anybody can implement a chatbot nowadays, right? But to really actually integrate it into your system in a way that's just more than a clever chatbot, to actually build it in, like he's talking about, to try to build it in, to build a spot, the, you know, uh, stuff in the kernel and everything. He points out that we, you know, that AI can write code, but it struggles with system integrations and end-to-end -end solutions. So this process involves multiple layers of development that demand human oversight and problem solving. Now, I know everyone's going to come back and be like, but Copilot's great. Like, yeah, there are some tools out there that are starting to get this, and they work until they don't. Um, and that's kind of true for every black box system, right? The future of software development lies in collaborative efforts between AI and developers. So together, we can achieve a more efficient and innovative solution. Now, AI excels at handling large data sets and performing repetitive tasks, but where it really drops the ball is the ability to tackle complex problem solving independently, right? Um, and I'm going to give you some examples here in just a minute because, well, actually, let me jump to those examples really quick because I think these are some examples of why, um, and I have some notes here, um, pull up on camera here. So let me, let me give you an example. So I had this one here, and it was a thumbnail that I'd used for a previous... Um, uh, YouTube, and I was like, hey, I need to replace this. So I put this into, uh, I don't remember, I tried actually two or three different AI tools, actually. And I said, hey, I need to have this replaced with, and I think I was talking about how Amazon's losing on the AI front, right? So I, I, needed, it, I needed it to say, you know, rip Amazon. I needed it to say rip Amazon, right? So I told it, hey, replace rip developers with rip Amazon. And this is what the AI tool gave me. I think this really highlights um, how well AI is doing, right? I, um, I think it's, I, I think, you know, did it do what I asked it to do? Yes, it put the words rip Amazon AI onto the image. Did it replace them? No. Now, some might add, well, this is image, this is like, you know, but I, I mean, to me, at the end of the day, if, you know, I, I've found repetitive times that I've run into this over and over again because. Uh, you know, I've seen a lot of different, um, uh, a lot of different jokes and everything against some AI. Um, you know, overall AI is just really struggles, and it really can't um, dive into some of the things that humans can do. So, uh, you know, in the end, AI is going to have a, a tough time um, really being able to try to compete wholeheartedly against a human in being able to do judgment as well as other things, right? Um, there's still just a layer of human creativity and implementation that we're always going to see from AI. Um, I know I've shared before, but there's you know a joke when ChatGPT first came out. Um, somebody emails a developer and says, "Hey, you're out of a job. This thing is going to write all your code for you." Last night I had it build a whole website for me, and the guy's like, "All right, cool. Show me uh, show me your website. I'm curious to take a look." And he was like, sure, here it is. And the guy copies and pastes C colon my doc slash my website dot HTML. And that just goes to highlight and kind of this joke around 
um, you know, how AI is at problem solving, right? AI excels at handling these large data sets, but it really can't problem solve. And that's, that's really the big thing that AI is, is going to always struggle with compared to a developer. Now, <clears throat> there's some big tech companies that are playing in the space, obviously. This, week's been earn this week and last week have been earning calls. We are seeing, <clears throat> don't quote me exactly on this number, but I think it was $35 billion that Meta put in uh, so far this year on AI spending. Um, a lot of that you know, is going into infrastructure and hardware. And so a guy like Linus, who's looking at the kernel and the investments that's going into that, is really happy. That's a great win for him, right? So big tech companies like NVIDIA are playing a really crucial role, and we're seeing AMD is also starting to really fight back. We're seeing Intel talk about AI chips. We're seeing, and all of these have to be open source in order to be able to play in the AI space. So for somebody like Trevalds, he sees a positive development as it drives innovation and resource sharing. This contribution helps democratize access to cutting-edge technologies, enabling smaller companies and individual developers to benefit. And I've talked a lot about how I don't love the money that's being dumped into these huge models, right? <clears throat> so Metalama just released its 405 billion input model. And Zuckerberg admitted hundreds of millions of dollars were, were put into building that model um, and getting it trained. So you know, you're not just going to spin up a server really quick on DigitalOcean and host that. Um, one of the minimum servers to host a true LLM, to actually host your own LLM on DigitalOcean is almost $10,000 a month. I don't know a lot of startups that are running in that level of single server. That's our single server. Um, I don't know a lot of startups that are running in that level of single server expenditure. Now, a lot. Of the, if you just want a little chat bot, sure, there's you know, lots of $20 and $30 a month services that you can buy those and spend those up with. But if you actually want to be doing cutting edge contribution, we've got these big companies, Microsoft, um, you know, Meta, uh, you know, obviously NVIDIA, obviously, you know, OpenAI. I mean, there's Google. Um, I mean, every single one, Amazon, they're all spending billions of dollars right now dumping into AI. And so this is all going into open source. So this is a great time for the open source community and to continue to really foster that growth and innovation. And it's going to provide a fertile ground for new ideas and solutions. I think that what we will see with this AI hype, bubble, whatever you want to call it, I do think what we're going to see is in 2024 and 2025, we're going to see a lot of people who are like, great, we've got this new tool. How do we use it? How do we integrate it? And I think that's going to require developers. So Linus Revolts concludes that AI will be a powerful tool for developers enhancing productivity and innovation. However, not replace developers and the need for skilled developers. The combination of AI and human expertise will drive the next wave of technological advancements. The tech market is expected to rebound strongly in the fall of 2024 with significant growth into 2025. Developers who embrace AI and continuously adapt to new techniques will thrive its an evolving landscape. The future is really bright. Now, <clears throat> what I think we're seeing is a very similar thing to, and I talked a little bit about this yesterday, but an exact, uh, you know, a comparison to what we saw with Tesla's FSD. Now, I'm not, I, I'm a super big Tesla fanboy. I'll just admit it. I, I loved them when I first climbed in one. Uh, I drove my first Model 3 Performance in 2018. I bought a Model 3 Performance in 2020. I love it. I don't, I'm not a car guy, but I love that vehicle. It's just fun to drive. It's easy. And FSD is fantastic. And so I bought FSD with my car in 2020. And FSD has been an interesting model of what we're seeing with AI. AI is really good at getting to 80%. And if you go look at all the latest benchmarks, you're going to see that they're in the 80% ranges. They're going to get a strong 80%. But just like with FSD, that last 20% has taken years um, Elon Musk is notorious, I think it was in 2020, by saying that robotaxis would be around by the end of the year. Because I think I remember him saying that either the year that I bought it or the year after I bought my Model 3. And he was obviously wrong. Those last 20% of FSD, that last 20% of AI is very difficult. And that's where the human factor still lies in driving the car. Now, it, it's going to be the same thing for software development. We're going to see that it will 30x you know, developers. Developers are going to become way more efficient because it will help us. Um, I was rewriting a part of the course last night, re-recording part of it because our, our course is relaunching this fall in a different way. And as we're as I was doing that, 
even I, who don't, don't spend, I don't spend every day in code. I, I work with a lot of developers and I'm very technical. But as I was writing the code, even I was impressed with some of the latest updates uh, that Copilot's brought into um, our development tools. And this is, this is amazing. I've been developing for a long time. So I'm pretty hard to impress, actually, is what I'm trying to say. So AI is coming a long way, and it will continue to help developers. But like, like Linus uh, said, and again, he's been around the block even longer than I have, right? Um, I remember taking a course in school where my entire, I probably still have the book somewhere, um, the entire course, it was the course material was about this thick, and it was a printout of the Linux kernel, and this was the 2.4 kernel, um, which was, and this would have been like um, 2003, 2004-ish range. And so Linux has moved a long ways, and Linus has seen a lot, and he also agrees that the future is actually really bright for developers, and he's excited by AI and its opportunities for developers. So as I've told develop said a lot on this channel, as I've told developers over and over again, AI is not going to replace your job, but a developer who knows how to use AI might. So get studied up. Here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers in our coding boot camp, as well as I bring you a ton of great videos here on some of the latest trends and packages and things. So make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you hundreds of free code samples. Um, I have a link in those coding videos on how to go get the free coding samples, and there's hundreds of coding samples out there. So, uh, and, and, and I think I think we just hit our fifth 500th uh, coding sample out there, and it's all in the repository, it's free. It's all for you guys. Um, but we love to train software developers in our coding boot camps, and we love to build custom software solutions. Um, we're spinning up yet another team for a new company today, and I'm very excited about that. So reach out to us, we'd love to help if you're looking for some software needs. Make sure you hit the links down below, and we will check you guys next time. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel because we bring you lots of great tutorials and tips that every developer should know. See you next time.